Welcome to Fellowship Church. I want to say a big shout out to all of our campuses. We have Overflow right here in our different locations, but also Fellowship Church is one church in five locations. Let's do a shout out to the coolest church in the hottest town, Fellowship Church Miami. How are you guys doing? Also, downtown Dallas. What's up, downtown Dallas? And up in Plano. And then over at Funky Town, Fort Worth. All right, welcome to Fellowship Church. What a great, great time. I'm in the middle of a series called Shark Week, W-E-A-K. We're so honored to have with us someone who is just an epic person for this epic time. So I want us to stand to our feet and let's welcome a surfer from Kauai, Bethany Hamilton. Great to have you here. Have a seat. Wow, it's wonderful to have you here, Bethany. Thank you for having me. Please be seated. Please be seated. Whoa. The soul surfer herself. Bethany, how do you like Texas? I got to ask you. I mean, this is it. I mean, this, this is this is Tejas. I'm talking about the real deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been awesome. Everyone's been super sweet, and um, it is roasting outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's been good. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It's a, it's a cool, cool place. Well, listen, Bethany, tell us a little bit about your life. For example, I've got to ask you, what was it like growing up in a place like Kauai? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was so blessed to grow up in Hawaii. Um, I was born and raised in Kauai, and um, yeah, it's just been awesome. Like, my whole family uh, serves, and we spend a lot of time at the beach growing up, and still do. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's just a very mellow, laid-back place, you know. We don't have, like, a freeway. Like, it's just two lanes around the whole island, and it takes, like, two and a half hours to get around. And um, yeah, it's just awesome. Have, how many people have ever been to a Kauai here? Wow. Nice. It's impressive. I've never been. I'm going to come over there, at least not come over there and visit you one day. Kauai. Yeah. Anyway, Kauai. <laughs> Kauai. So you grew up there, and you have a couple of brothers. Yes. I have two older brothers, and they are awesome, um, both very talented wave riders and in other areas of life, too. And we have two dogs. Um, my dog, Hana, she stars in Soul Surfer. She's like my dog. <laughs> but, um, and then I have two awesome parents whom I love, and yeah, it's awesome. Now your brother, one of your brothers happens to be here at Fellowship Church. Let's put our hands together for Timmy. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Tim, the man is rocking some cool hair. I mean, you, yeah, yeah, you can just see him and like, that guy's a surfer. There's he, no doubt. He got inspired by my hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. So, so anyway, Bethany, growing <laughs> up, you, you grew up in a Christian home. And, and one of the great things about your movie, of course, the documentary, the book, and just knowing you, I love it when, when young people understand that God loves them. They understand as, as much as possible about Jesus and they give control of their lives to him. Tell us a little bit about that, that whole thing, what it was like growing up and about your spiritual pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, when I was about five years old, um, one of my best friends and I like, just decided to give our hearts to God and um, we just prayed like, to give our hearts to God and um, ever since then it's just been something that I've learned and developed and and grown in and maybe at the time I didn't completely understand but it was just a step of faith and not knowing really where this is going to take me but just trusting in God and knowing that he's in control and um, God has just been an amazing thing in my life and has brought me on so many journeys that I never could have imagined on my own and yeah it's been awesome and 
my parents um, were a huge influence in my life, but they weren't like super pushy. They just like guided us and nudged us in the way they wanted us to go, but also gave us the freedom and helped us just understand what it is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and what it is to like live your life for Him. That's great to hear that because there's so many negative role models out there, Bethany, and obviously you're the antithesis of that. What a phenomenal role model right here. I mean, and you're the first to say that, hey, you're not perfect, no one's perfect, however, we serve a perfect God, an awesome God. Mm. Bethany, there's thousands and thousands of young people who are here right now listening, watching, etc. I think you would tell them, hey, take the step of faith today, even as a, as a, as a young woman, a young man. Yeah, definitely. Like, God is so good, and He loves each and every one of us, and I'm not perfect, and neither is any of you, and that's what's so awesome is like God forgives us and accepts us as we are, and if we want to, we can choose to follow Him and give our lives to Him, and and definitely like no pressure, like you have to like want that and want God to be a part of your life, and He's going to take you on amazing journeys and like turn bad into good and, and just make your life, like, rock your world. Like, he's awesome. <laughs> and, and Bethany, that, that is so true because, yeah, you can clap. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> go for it, man. You know, I think sometimes people get the, the incorrect view of what it means when we walk with the Lord because the Scripture says that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. It doesn't say that all things are good. Some things are hellacious. Some things are horrible. We all get attacked. You have gone through a tragedy that's hard to even describe. However, God doesn't cause bad things, but He uses bad things and good things for great things. Mm -hmm. And so many times, setbacks can be set up for God to give us ways we never, ever, ever even imagined. Yeah, for sure. I have a couple of Bible verses I wanted to share this morning. Um, and like, yeah, God doesn't say like life's going to be perfect and easy, but he does say that if you trust in me, like I will be your strength. And in this Bible verse, um, 2 Corinthians 12, 10, it's when I am weak, then I'm strong. It's like God is our strength and and when we are weak, He is going to shine His strength through us and, and be our guider and like, just help us get through those rough times. And um, here's another verse that I've just been kind of focusing on lately, and it's um, Colossians 3, 22 through 24. Um, Bond servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And like that's just a reminder that like we need to serve God and, and live life to honor Him, and, and that's when things just work out, and um, it's just life's just so much better. <laughs> okay, how about, Bethany, you mentioned before the whole fear thing, fearing God. I mean, when people hear that or see that, some are like, maybe it's their first time to even attend church. They're like, what do you mean fear God? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Um, I what guess does the Bible mean by that? You know? Yeah. I mean, there's so many different things in our lives that we fear. Like maybe when you go in the ocean, you're scared of sharks <laughs> or you're scared of currents or drowning. And um, just in like life, there's stuff that we fear, whether it's sitting in front of large crowds or um, <laughs> someone that's maybe just kind of being mean to you at school or work or whatever and um, or just fear of blowing it you know like just all these little things like uh, can really hold us back from trusting in God and and then at the same time we have all this other stuff we're fearing, but maybe you're not necessarily fearing God. But throughout the Bible, it's always saying, like, fear the Lord your God and, um, and just kind of have, like, respect for Him. And um, I guess just taking your fear and, and giving it to Him and asking Him to help you get through that is essential. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're saying 
to face fear, we fear God. And it's not fear like, ah, it's fear like, God, you're awesome. I'm in awe of you. You're God, I'm not. And, and so often we sometimes act like that we're God. Obviously yeah. we're not. When we put him, though, in the rightful place, as you did as a, as a young girl, that's when we can have the ability only through his strength to face these fears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, I had another verse I wanted to share. Deuteronomy 23, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto the battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified of them. And I don't really know where I was going with this one, but um, <laughs> I guess just like, yeah, we have battles, and you're not supposed to fear, but you're supposed to trust in God, and like, that's every single day. Like, you're having stuff that you're battling with, whether it's your own flesh, um, your sinful nature, or um, just, like, your family's going through rough times, or, like, you're dealing with something with your friend, or, you know, you know what's, you know what's going on in your own personal life, and just knowing that you got to just trust in God and, and let Him take control of that. Bethany, in, in the movie... And in some of your writings, you, of course, talk about your, your parents following the Lord, modeling that. And also, I like how you have put it, they, they nudged you guys to church, which is huge. As a parent, my wife and I have four kids. Parenting is not easy. It's, mm -hmm. it's challenging. But as you have said, though, that whole thing about modeling Christ in the home and I want to talk to you, too, in a second about how your parents spent time with you, which is, which is big. But I also go back to that word nudge, because parents have an opportunity to lead their kids to the house. Then, though, you, you put it so cool, it's a child's responsibility to say, okay, God, I either give the reins of my life to you, or I don't. Mm -hmm. So, so describe describe a little bit about your your parents and 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 what they what they did. Yeah, because obviously they did a lot of stuff right. Yeah, I mean my parents are awesome and I love them and adore them and they haven't always been perfect, but like they really have been a huge influence in my and my brother's lives and you know they nudged us to go to church and um, that was awesome and and most of the time we wanted to go so. It worked out in the end. Sometimes I don't want to go, and I'm a pastor. I sometimes <laughs> wake up and like, man, I'm not sure I want to go today. But yeah, and then, and then you have to always keep in mind, especially if you're younger, like once you're out of high school and you move out of your parents' house, like they might not be nudging you so much. So then it's like you're stepping out on your own, and it's your choice ultimately. And, and like life's changing, and you're not necessarily going to have your good group of friends if you do have that. And... Um, that good influence and support system. So it's kind of like just forming a pattern and, a, and then just like a, just a good environment growing up can really build a strong That's foundation as you get older. Very well said. And yeah. when you surf, you gotta have a serious foundation. I mean, you have to have balance. <laughs> Speaking of balance, <laughs> Bethany, I don't wanna throw you off balance. I've been trying to work on this thing right here, this endo board. I don't know if you guys have seen one of those before. I've seen it in Soul Surfer, and I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool to watch Bethany on this board? Anybody here want to watch her? Because, I mean, it takes, it takes some serious balance. In fact, some of our staff, we've, we've tried to do this, and we've had even some injuries. I've had some family members get <laughs> injured on the endo board. Bethany, I, I, I want you guys to watch this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> It's not that ridiculous. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, the endo board, I spent a lot of time on this, like, when I couldn't surf right after the shark attack to help, like, regain my balance. But, somebody yeah. balance somebody. <laughs> Look at that. Look. <laughs> you can pretend you're surfing. <laughs> Bethany, I gotta try it. I gotta try it. I really, I mean, this is embarrassing in front of you, but I might get you to hold my hand for a second while I, while I try this. Would you just, yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way because maybe the right foot. I, I'm gonna show you guys how, how difficult it is. I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs>
whoa. I, I can do it a little bit better than that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nice. That's <laughs> all I got. That's all I got. Anyway, you guys pick up one of these. They're, they're, it's a great workout. I did it one day. I, could, I had to do it in between a door frame. My legs were so sore <laughs> for the next three days, I couldn't even walk the endo board. That was a little random, but I'm glad we did that. <laughs> what balance? <laughs> Going back to your friends. Because we were talking about your friends. friends. Friends are crucial, Bethany. And I've always said this. You know, I could meet your best friends without even knowing you. And I could tell what kind of person you are, what kind of young woman you are. And the same is true in my life and every person here. Your friends, your best friends, how would you, um, how would you describe them? Um, yeah, I have an amazing group of friends. Very adventurous and... A lot of them um, love the Lord and are just very encouraging in my life. And um, yeah, it's been kind of a weird couple of years, um, like the last few years since I finished high school and like friends going off to college and stuff. So it hasn't been quite like the same, like, but it's cool that you have Facebook because you can keep in touch. <laughs> but um, yeah, my friends have just been awesome and have been made a huge difference in my life as far as encouraging me to like just trust in God and, and walk in the way he has called us to walk. And Let me stop. What you said there was a, a monstrous principle. They encourage you to walk in God. And that is such a word, isn't it, to, to young people? Because you talked about patterns. I'm telling you, when, when, when kids are smaller, when I was younger, when Bethany's younger, those relational patterns that we form as little ones, I'm telling you, carry us throughout life. And I'm saying this, whether you're 10, whether you're 20 or 40, your best friends got to be people who encourage you and who, mm. who applaud you and who encourage you in the Lord, Bethany. Yeah. Because also, too, I mean, you're, you're in the real world. You're, you're 21, you're all over the place, and, and, and you rub shoulders. You talk to a lot of people who were clueless. Yeah, and um, one thing that really made a huge difference in my life was through high school, um, all, like my tight-knit group of friends and I had like a purity Bible study, which has been huge in my life, was just like, you know, honoring God and, and keeping yourself pure until marriage, and um, that has been something that was just like really has stuck with me ever since then, and um, yeah, it's cool to know that all my friends have done pretty well with that. Yes. <laughs> Bethany, you know, the whole, the whole friends thing, that's just one of the great things about the church. You know, fellowship, like, like many other churches, we have a lot of people who show up here every weekend who are testing the waters. They're, they're thinking about, okay, uh, stepping on the board, taking that step of faith. They're, they're seeing a little bit about Jesus, about, about the Bible, etc. So we have those people. Then on the other hand, we have people here who have ask the Lord to take control of their lives. I've always said, though, the church should be a safe place to hear a dangerous message. So there is an adventurous aspect, a major, a major thrill. It, it gets gnarly walking with God, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. And people sometimes think, what do you mean by that? Well, you're a walking, talking, living, breathing example of it, not only through the shark attack, but also what's happened since then. Yeah, I mean, it's insane, like, what God has done, like, since the shark attack, just my life has totally changed, and uh, growing up in Hawaii, it's just so small and laid back, and then all of a sudden, I'm just thrown into the world with my story, and it's been awesome, because I've been able to just share my story with so many people, and, and be an encouragement in their lives, and, um, but <laughs> it, it definitely has not been easy, and, like, there's definitely rough times, and I definitely have to like keep my eyes focused on God and, and read His Word and, and just give Him whatever I'm dealing with when it's not exactly easy. And yeah, maybe you're, you are questioning God right now and like whether you have a relationship with Him or not, like He's totally worth giving a shot because He loves you just as you are. And, and I know that my life has been that much more better with Him and with Him a part of it. No question. We're, we're wired for that. And, you know, when we, when we give him control, 
that's when we gain control. People think they're in control when they're running the show, but in reality, when we admit that we're out of control, give him control, that's when we have this, this peace. What's it like, though, Bethany? I've got to ask you this, to have a movie made about <laughs> your life. I mean, think about that. I mean, all of our lives, you know, our, your life is a movie, mine is too, I understand that. But I mean, we're talking about a real silver screen movie. How, what was that? I mean, what, what, how, how, how did you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, making Soul Surfer was insane. Like, uh, so it kind of started brewing um, over five years ago because we started off writing my book, Soul Surfer. And then my sister-in-law produced my documentary, Heart of a Soul Surfer. And then from there, the idea of making an actual like, feature film came up. And we're like, well, I guess it could work out. Like, God, if you want this to happen, like, make it happen. And, and to the documentary is phenomenal. If you've not seen the documentary, it's on special features of the DVD Soul Surfer. It's great. Yeah. And um, so then we kind of started, like, uh, throwing it out there, um, trying to get people to get inspired to make this film. And then we met this guy named Sean McNamara. He's the director of the film. And I fell in love with him instantly. He's just a really awesome, great guy. And he really wanted my family and I to be involved throughout the whole making of the film. And so, yeah, things started coming together and really flowing and um, started with the casting. Um, by the way, my mom and I casted Anna Sophia Rob, who plays me in the movie. So that was really cool, because it's hard picking someone to play you in, in a movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, in, in the service prior to this, you know, I, I was thinking, okay, if, if, if someone came to you and, okay, they said, I want to make a movie about your life, who would you get to play you? You ever thought about that? It is a hard question. It is a hard question. <laughs> My mom did not think it was possible to, f to find anyone <laughs> that would suit her well, but she was really happy with Helen Hunt, so that was cool. Yeah. I think I would pick, I think I'd pick somebody like, I don't know, Brad Pitt to play me, or <laughs> Robert Pattinson, someone like that. You know, Robert Pattinson. 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 Anyway, I'm sorry, go. <laughs> I saw Robert Patterson one time and my jaw dropped. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Do you, so, know, do you know Justin Bieber? Um, I met him like really? last week. You're kidding me. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> I got really excited. Like, my cheeks are probably red right now. Yeah. Anybody but, hear a Bieber um, fever? <laughs> yeah, Bieber fever! Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too go goo gaga though. Yeah. But um, yeah. he was really sweet. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so making the film was really cool and very challenging at times, you know. Writing the script was probably the hardest thing because ultimately the, skip, the script like, leads and guides how the film turns out. And um, so that was pretty challenging, trying to come up with ways to portray our story properly and, and really share what we went through. And, and the motions and just all those little details that we wanted to share. And of course, keeping God like the center focus. But at the same time, making it so that the whole world could be impacted by it. And you guys did a magnificent job, <laughs> Bethany. You really, really did. <laughs> Bethany, you know, you know, you know, too, and this this whole thing about walking with the Lord, I like the way you said it, you're taking that risk. You've tried this, you've tried that. Talk, talk to the people who are listening to you, watching you right now, who are at that point where they've tried everything. They've served this wave, that wave, whatever, yet there's this ultimate wave in store for all of us. We're, we're hardwired for the wave, and you gotta take the risk and put it out there, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I guess in life, like, there's different paths we can take, and um, maybe you've tried a couple and they're not working out, and um, maybe you're at the point of like questioning, like, is God real? Like, is this like something I should really invest time in? And like, God is amazing, and I can only say that by what He's done in my life. And I know that He can bring you on adventures in waves that you could never dream of. And and yeah, I guess just give Him a try. Like, no pressure, but it's worth giving God a try because He loves you and and it could be the most ultimate, amazing ride of your life. <laughs> and I like too, Bethany, the time is now, and even a, a word to those young people, th those students, those kids who are old enough even to understand it, I'm telling you, when, when, when you make that decision, like this girl 
God's going to take you places you never, ever, ever dreamed possible. And parents, we have the opportunity, yes, to spend time with our kids, to be their friends, but also to lead them, to nudge them, as Bethany Hamilton <laughs> says, to church, to, to, to build that stuff. And, and then, I mean, we're not, we're not totally assured that everything's going to you know, be perfect, but then, I'm telling you, the trajectory will be absolutely amazing. How about this, Bethany? People are here today, and they've been attacked, and they're being attacked. And they've had, and are dealing with major setbacks right now. Family situations, emotional situations, financial situations. Talk to us about getting back in the water. Talk to us about, okay, what now after the attack? Because our common response is, why me? Okay, but obviously, you move from why me to what now? How, how just... Coach us on that. I guess just um, don't waste your time thinking why me because that is a waste of time. But bring it to God and, you know, just prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Like just dig into prayer and give it to God and, and read his word and, and surround yourself with people that are going to encourage you in, in what you're going through. And, and, and maybe life is kind of going well for you and things are actually feeling a bit easier, then reach out to those people that it's not going as good because it's each other that we need to be there for each other. That's right. That's why, that's why our church is called Fellowship. <laughs> fellowship is not only what a church is, it's what the church does. It's a bunch of fellows, men and women, rowing the ship <laughs> in the same direction. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Bethany, we thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Again, uh, again, what, what a role model. What a role model. Please, please be seated. You know, Bethany, I want us to have a prayer, and I, I, I want to pray um, for, for, for some folks in some different situations, and also some people here, Bethany, who need to take that risk to, to, to give their heart to Christ, because I know that's your desire, that's uh, our desire, and uh, I also want to pray for people who are going through setbacks, major setbacks in their life, okay? Let's pray together. Let's bow our heads just together here and no one moving at all in our overflow areas at all of our different environments right now. There'll be many people who will watch this on television. You might be watching it right now somewhere. Maybe you're in a bar, maybe you're in an apartment, maybe you're in a situation where you're thinking, you know what, I can't go on living. Just listen to these words as we pray. God, you are our hope. You are our dreams. You are our vision, you are our Lord. And I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and rise again, something we didn't deserve and we don't deserve. God, I pray for people right now who are going through difficult times, people who right now who are being attacked or maybe you've been attacked. And you listened to Bethany, you heard her just incredible, encouraging words. And and maybe, just maybe, you, you felt like, wow, that, that, that did something in my life. That, that really, really speaks to where I am. That's God. And, and you need right now, if you're going through a time like that, to just say, God, I know you didn't cause this setback. You didn't cause this attack. But I believe, God, you're going and are using it. You're going to use it, ultimately, one day, for something great. And I trust you, God. I trust you. Your setback, I'm telling you, is a setup. This opposition, this hellacious time, is really an opportunity that's going to be crazy. So just give the situation to God right now, what you're, what you're going through. He's your friend, he's your guide, your comforter. Others here, God, right now need to take that risk that Bethany took years ago. She's only 21, God, but just as a kid, 
She didn't understand it all, but she said, all right, I give my life to you, Jesus. Many of you here, many students here, many children here, even many adults here, you got doubts? Doubt means you got faith. Doubt your doubts. Feed your faith and just say, okay, I'm going to risk it. Whenever you take a risk, you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but just take a risk. You've tried everything else. Just say, God, I admit to you that I've messed up, that I've blown it, that I've sinned. I turn from my sins, God, and turn to you. I, to the best of my ability, acknowledge that you sent Jesus to live a sinless life and to die an excruciating death and to rise again just for me. You did it as you forgave me and took care of my sin. And right now, just say this, I give my life to you. As Bethany said, I, God, I give my heart to you. Tax, title, and license. Everything I am right now and everything I'll ever become. Just say that to God. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. I give control of my life to you. I believe many of you prayed that prayer. And if everyone would look at me for just a second, if you prayed that prayer, man, that's the best thing, Bethany, that you can ever, ever do. That's it, the best thing you can ever do. And let's, uh, let's, let's show our appreciation for people who prayed that prayer to ask Christ to come into their life right now. Everybody. Because the Bible says... The Bible says that there is a parte going on in heaven when one person, Bethany, one person gives control of their life to the Lord. And maybe you're not there yet. That's cool. Keep on kicking tires and testing the waters. Keep on showing up here. And I promise you, if you give God a chance, he'll change your life. Others, I'm just looking forward to seeing what, what, what God's going to do as he takes you through your woundedness and through, and through your attack. Here's something that, that you desperately need to pay attention to. If you prayed that prayer with me to, to give your heart to Christ, I've written a little booklet called, You've Chosen to Follow Christ, What's Your Next Step? You know, following Christ, Bethany, is all about a step. It's a step followed by a process. And you need to pick this booklet up. Where is it? It's on the seat back right in front of you. And if you're in one of our overflow areas, we'll make sure you get one of these. Just raise your hand and someone will give you one of these. If you're at one of our campuses, wherever you are, if you're watching this by television, just uh, call the number on your screen, go to our website, and we'll send you this or anything you need to know about this. What I would say too, Bethany, is this. If you prayed the prayer, if someone prayed the prayer to become a believer, I would say, first of all, tell somebody about it. Number two, make sure you get a Bible and start reading it. And number three, get planted in the house. And I'm definitely partial. I think Fellowship Church is the greatest church in the world. But there are other great, there are other great churches. So um, make sure, make sure that you do that. Anyway, let's again thank Bethany. Bethany, we love you. Thank you for and having me. And we're so, so proud of you. And God bless you. Bethany Hamilton. Bethany, thank you. God bless you.